All right, so before you do anything, stop what you're doing, reach into your pocket or your lap because you're probably messing on your phone right now because you're like, oh, I'm here in this security conference getting ready to watch a bunch of people talk and say things. But seriously, take that phone out and after you take that phone out, go find this application called Discord. Start the install on that now because I'm gonna be posting a QR code or a link at the very end of this talk. Yeah, do, do that first. All right, how do I, okay, how do I transition this thing? Oh yeah. Hello and good morning everybody. My name is Ronnie Tokazowski. I am a principal threat advisor with a company called CoFence. Um, what we do at CoFence is we specialize in phishing and user awareness. In addition to that, we also have several products that we can use in order to scan the different aspects of the email as they come in. For me, I'm one of those people where whenever I do a presentation, I don't like to do a sales or a vendor pitch, and I like to actually give information back. Um, this will very much be one of those cases. So let's go ahead and kick this off, and let's get started. I've been in cybersecurity for almost a decade now, and one of the jokes I frequently tell my mom is, hey mom, I will always have a job as long as one country hates another. And unfortunately, that still stands. So as cybersecurity professionals, you will also be able to follow that same motto. As long as one country hates another, you will have forever have a job in information security. And that's why I like information security is there are so many different things that you can learn and you can teach and you're exposed to and you get to understand. And a lot of times when people ask me what got me into cybersecurity, the underlying root thing was it was something interesting. It was something where I never wanted to do the same thing two different days in a row. It was something where I wanted a challenge and I wanted to go and do something. I wanted to try and make a better world. And it's one of those things where as you're in information security, you're going to be exposed to a lot of things such as organizations that don't patch their things. You're going to have to be able to articulate why it's important to actually patch that system. The amount of knowledge that you can gain is virtually endless. Um, as we've developed stuff here on the internet um, in the United States and especially in the information security community, um, whenever we find something that's interesting, we love sharing how it works. One of the things I would say with Nigeria, as you guys are learning um, different things in cybersecurity, that's something that you want to grasp on to explain how something works, but also be able to share that information as well. One of the things I love most about information security and just technology in general is how many different things you can use in order to do something fun. When it comes to information security, one of the fun things we really like doing is having a lot of fun. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and create different puzzles and challenges and different types of things like that so that we can go ahead and kind of play jokes and have fun in information security. There was a security conference in Washington, D.C. that I attended called ShmooCon, and one of the things that you had to do for that conference was there was a challenge where you can hack your badge. And what it was, was you have a little QR code and you had to make it to where if you could build something that would be that would still be scannable for your coupon code, then you might be able to win a black badge. And what a black badge is, is it's a badge that you can go use to go to the conference forever and as, a, as long as it's currently going. So one of the things I made was a drone. And on the drone, if you have the lights here. This is actually a computer right here. So this was a Raspberry Pi that I had built with my QR code and whatnot, dead conference, so no need, no worries on scanning that one. With the Raspberry Pi, what it would do is it would actually light up and everything. And if you're unfamiliar, I'm assuming most people are familiar with the Raspberry Pi, but for those who are not, it's a small computer that you can use to build different things. Um, and it runs an operating system called Linux. And for me, the reason I like working with Linux and the reason I like doing things like that and building is because it kind of gives me a challenge in order to do different things. So one of the cool things with this and when I did this project was I was not familiar with, I was a little bit familiar with soldering, but actually running electrical wires, it was something where I wasn't completely familiar with that. But through doing this and through doing a fun project like this, it was something where I was able to not only figure out, okay, I'm gonna do the programming on the Raspberry Pi Zero here, where I can go ahead and make this light up display and say different words. So I was able to learn that side of it. I was able to learn, okay, in order to run the power, I need to run, where was my power? Ah, oh, here you go. So in order to run a power, I was able to run it off of a um, battery, but in order to run the board off the battery and these lights, I need to use a voltage step down. So I was able to take whatever my voltage was here, drop it down to the 12 volts for this here, and the five volts for this. And again, there's a little board in here that actually does that and handles that. So 
it's something where again in information technology we have different projects like this in order to kind of help us continue learning one of the other interesting things about cybersecurity as well is that as an information security professional depending on which area that you go in you'll be able to track and understand different types of cyber thought so for example i do a lot of tracking of hackers who are actually based in nigeria um, while my colleagues are like, oh, all Nigerians are scammers and everything. You and I both know that's absolute garbage. That's not true. But the, some of the actors I track are Yahoo boys. And, in, and the reason I do a lot of tracking of that is because here in the United States, one of the common conceptions that Yahoo boys have is that their victims always get their money back. However, after working with many of those victims, the unfortunate truth is it's not the fact. Um, when a lot of these the Yahoo boys will interact with a lot of the victims over here, they are left absolutely financially devastated. They're left emotionally devastated. And for many of them, they have no desire to continue in life because that there goes all their inheritance. And it's something where the problem with that and having that approach is that while the Yahoo boys believe that they're getting their money, while they believe that they can go and do different types of rituals in order to continue extracting more money from them and it's all good and great, the problem is they're causing a lot of damage to a lot of people. And not just that, but they're also hurting the American population as a whole. Um, and it's something where as I've been tracking this type of crime, especially coming out of Yahoo Boys, we've seen billions and billions and billions of dollars that a lot of them have actually stolen. Um, and unfortunately, it's something where with the amount of money that they're, that they're stealing, they're now affecting the economy over in the United States because of how much money they took. And while some of them may be like, oh, it's easy money, it's great, we can go ahead and just steal the, the money and that everything's good. It's something where at the end of the day, that's not the best way to operate. Because again, when you're stealing the money, it creates an unequal balance on other stuff. So now people who weren't even as part of that scam are now being affected too. And that's one of the reasons that I really try to advocate for a positive view of Nigeria is because the Yahoo boys are doing this. Um, but there's a lot of legit opportunities and there's a lot of legit people in Nigeria. And unfortunately, the people here in the States just don't understand that. Like, I know I'm preaching to the choir on this one, but seriously, they don't get it. And one of the reasons I was most excited to actually put this together and to help with the sponsorship and the guy helped put this through and how for me, this was uh, very much a, I'm gonna do everything I can to help support this is because you are the next generation of Nigerians who are going to be going forward, actually pushing out that positive reputation. You are the generation that's going to go ahead and actually work towards fixing these problems, building the infrastructure, making it to where the power that's currently goes that flickers on and off um, actually stays on. You're the next generation that's going to start investing and understanding the different types of technology that's out there in order to generate power. While you may have a generator that generates some power, there's more efficient ways. There's new research around the different types of wind technology, different types of solar technology. And it's something where there's a lot of positivity that can be, that can be done in order to push that through. In addition to that, you're the next generation that's going to go ahead and actually help and make that positive light and start uh, making things work better. It's something where right now, with the way the world is, is a pretty messed up place. But it's something where as we operate and as we all try and go forward with this, it's something where we need to realize that we're all to, on this dust ball that we call Earth together. So why not try and work together and make the best of it? At the beginning of the video, I mentioned an application called Discord. And what Discord is, is it's an application that you can have different groups of people uh, talking back and forth from different parts of the world. When I grew up, I grew up on an extremely small and isolated island in the middle of the, in the, middle of the water um, in the middle of nowhere, North Carolina. And it was something where the most interesting thing that I always that I had growing up was the fact that I can use this electrical device, this computer that's connected into the wall that goes to this thing called the internet. And somehow through all that magic, I can speak to somebody on the complete opposite side of the world. And growing up, it was something where I had never even began to understand the concept. Hey, I could talk with somebody in Egypt, for example. Like, of all places, I'm like, wow, they have pyramids over there. And in my young mind, I'm like, that's, the most, that's one of the most interesting things I knew about Egypt at the time. But it was something where, to me, that's what really got me interested in working with computers, was just realizing the fact that a lot of the technology that's out there is all interconnected and for better or for worse, it lets all of us humans actually communicate back and forth with each other. Um, and it's something where once people start realizing that that's actually a good thing and realizing that, oh, I don't have to go and yell at this, at this person over here. It's something where at the end of the day, 
the internet really is a good place, but there's a lot of bad people who are working on taking that good away, or they're trying to, or maybe not that they're ta trying to take the good away, but they're trying to use the internet for their own for their own personal gain. And it's something where the internet was never created in order to have one individual or a handful of individuals control. It was for everybody. Um, it was something where everybody could be interconnected and essentially start sharing information back and forth. To help bolster that collaboration and to help bolster the ability for people to communicate back and forth in a positive light, one of the things I did was I've launched a Discord server. I'm calling it IntroTech Nigeria. And what it is, is it's a place where people can come and start sharing different projects that they're working on. They can start sharing different pieces of knowledge that they have because it's something where a piece of knowledge that you have and a piece of knowledge that I have are going to be two completely different things. And at the end of the day, there's things that you know about that I don't know. And there's things that I know about that you don't know. And it's something where that's not necessarily a bad thing. That's just, we live in two, we grew up in two different places. In order to be successful in information security, it's imperative that you broaden your horizons and you broaden your view on how you perceive things. Because sometimes you may get have some information that states, oh, this is the best approach or this is the best approach. But it may be one of those things where neither approach is the best approach. So it's something where you'll have to be able to work through that and be able to see, okay, maybe option C up here is gonna be my best approach. Or maybe somebody who went and wrote a tutorial on XYZ, maybe that may be one method to do it, but maybe they may have missed something on the beginning of the step that kind of threw, completely threw out their perspective on that. So it's something where, again, as you work in information security, you'll start seeing that there's a lot of different things and a lot of approaches that while they may be good for some people, it's not necessarily, the, it may not necessarily be the right approach or there may actually be a better way. So keep your mind elastic to where you can kind of start working through a lot of these different things and realize that there might be better and more efficient ways to do things. And seriously, one of the most important things, not just in information security, but in life, have fun and enjoy what you're doing. Because if you don't enjoy what you're doing, you're gonna be miserable and you're gonna hate it. If you're working in information security, why not have some fun with it? Have some fun with it. Did somebody say serious and in information ah! security? No. I can't believe I just said that. But all that choking aside, one of the biggest things I could say is the biggest takeaway of information security is just be awesome to each other. I have our YouTube feed where that, and that's I always end it that way. And the reason is because at the end of the day, we're all humans and we're all on this dust ball together. And it's something where until we start working back and forth with each other and being kind to each other and sharing information, it's something where no one's going to get further in any of this. And it's something where more people need to realize it and think that way. And again, your generation is going to start being able to work on a lot of that stuff and understanding, hey, here's where the problems are. Here's what we need to do in order to start moving stuff forward. As I close on my YouTube videos, have fun, stay safe, and be awesome to each other. Have an amazing time at the conference. Make sure you network with people, meet new people, talk with people, understand their perspectives and kind of see where they're coming from and see what projects they're working on. Start talking about the different projects that you're working on. Because again, you'll find out that as you start networking with people, um, it's something where a lot of people have diffs of the similar interests just like you do. So it's something where the networking piece and the actually sitting down trying to talk to somebody and just sharing that information, that's one of the most interesting and fascinating things with information security is being able to do that. I really wish I could be out there in Nigeria this year, but it's something where I want to say, go have a drink for me. So have fun, enjoy, enjoy the conference and take care. Peace y'all. <clears throat> Hello everybody, how's it going? Um, well, a little bit of an echo on my side. Um, okay, cool. So I wanted to go ahead and open the floor in case anybody had any questions. Um, thank you for listening to my uh, presentation and stuff and whatnot. Thank you, dignified guests who are currently attending. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions, I am happy to answer them. Any questions? Uh, can you read that one more time? Do I have any question for him? I was yeah. going to say, I'm also very happy to take any general cybersecurity questions if you're curious on different programming languages that are good for this, that, and the other. Um, if there's a certain direction you're curious on, I'm happy to answer any related questions to that too.
Okay, we don't have any question for you today. Thank you very much. Yep, yep thank you. Okay, we have we have we have a question now. Do you say that there was a question? Yes, please. Okay. okay. Hello, yeah, thank you for that um, presentation. Nice one. Uh, just a quick question. You mentioned that um, you do some kind of uh, research into cybercrime in Nigeria. You know, they bear yeah. business. Business may compromise. Can you shed more light on some of your projects? And also, if you yep, collaborate with some uh, international agencies, I know uh, some organizations do collaborate with uh, FBI and uh, some other agencies to, you know, give them the result of their research. Is this something you dive into as well? Yep. So specifically, business email compromise is the area where I focus on this. And it's something where I've been actively working with email compromise for the last six years now. Um, I've actually got, a, a, here we go. A, um, I don't know if you all can see, but this was actually from a shirt I had gotten when doing a cybersecurity presentation with um, at an FBI conference. So when it comes to working with the Bureau, um, I do a lot of work back and forth with that. Um, they're one of the ones who does a lot of work on business email compromise. And in addition to that, with the way and with the way it's currently structured, the number of victims, it's something where it's very much an international uh, type of crime. So when approaching that, that's very much how we kind of, how we approach it. Um, so I've, like I said, I've been doing that for over six years now. Um, we've had a lot of success in that fight. Um, I know for what I've known so far, um, we've uh, I know uh, millions of dollars have been successfully reversed. I know that um, there are about, uh, lots of victims have been identified. I think in the couple of years of working back and forth with FBI, um, Interpol, Europol, other folks and stuff, I know there's been well over a thousand arrests on the business email compromise side of things. Um, and it's something to note that while that when doing e research on business email compromise, it's not just the email aspect of it, there's a whole underlying ecosystem that goes in that too and everything. So for example, um, one of the areas that I also focus on is uh, romance scams. So romance scams, a lot of times, the way that those work in kind of in conjunction with that, um, your romance victim will be socially engineered into giving up bank accounts um, as used as part of this email compromise. So it's very much a, a two-factor type of crime on that. Okay. So hopefully that, hopefully that addressed your question on the business email compromise side. 